the stage our next act, Dima. <laughs> in a stand-up comedy course. I told my friend, hey, I'm going to do stand-up comedy classes and my company is going to pay for it, actually. And for, he, for which his response was, oh, pretty cool, Dima, yeah. So finally you both realize that you don't have any sense of humor and really decide <laughs> to tackle this issue. And I find it funny. I mentioned there was a meeting at the company at some point. Okay, this guy Dima, he doesn't make any sense. He tries to make his awkward jokes, just making everyone uncomfortable around him. Just let's fire him. <laughs> and probably there was HR or legal advisor. No, I, I'm afraid we, can, we can't fire him. It's illegal in Germany. But we could, <laughs> but we could uh, send him to this stand up or whatever comedy class, you know, to get some humor education. <laughs> We did it with our business people before, seemed to help for a while. <laughs> so I'm here trying to justify this risky investment. <laughs> Speaking while we are on a job topic, I work as a software developer and this is my title. And this is boring, you know. It sounds boring, it is boring, you know, no one likes it. <laughs> and every, everyone else around me has this like cool titles, you know, creative titles. And, for example, in my company, we, call, we used to call ourselves Change Angels. Change fucking angels. You know? <laughs> like, and if you have a problem with a religious concept, you can call yourself Change Agent. Like, what do you do? I'm a Change Agent. Yeah, I, I got it, but what do you do? I try to unleash the process of, like, but to transform companies from inside out by uh, applying this agile lean method. Like, yeah, like, for fuck's sake, please. <laughs> <laughs> If you're so good about change, how about changing the job title so it makes sense? <laughs> but then imagine how our sales process should be, uh, should, should be running. Hey, it's Alex from Futurize. Do you need some change? It's quite opposite of this homeless people in San Francisco begging for money. Of course, there is no success. <laughs> But people enjoy this, the smart titles, you know? Like, you know what happens when I introduce myself at you know, networking events and conferences as a software developer? Nothing. Nothing happens. <laughs> people just don't care. Like, what? No, no. For the next one. <laughs> so, I, I'm thinking to be more likable because I'd like to hang out with these change engines and all these business people. So, I'm thinking to. <coughs> To change my title to something more creative, you know, something more bold, something with a statement, you know, something like maybe success manager. Yeah? <laughs> what do you do? I'm responsible for success. Yes. Someone needs to do this job. Yeah? Want to help? <laughs> but yeah, success manager might be a bit a bit creative, right? It's a bit, maybe something more technical, maybe something more concrete. So it it says actually, what do I do? Sounds like digital disruptor. I disrupt. <laughs> that sounds cool, you know. And I found it's quite a handy title. I could use the same title on my business card and in my Tinder profile. Uh, sounds sexy. <laughs> Digital disruptor. <laughs> <laughs> I could use the same pickup lines, you know, at the job, at the job interviews and in dates. I will disrupt your dentist tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, the question was. How do I see myself in three years? <laughs> no, no, don't, don't, don't write it. No, don't write, no, I didn't mean it. No, like, oh, sexual harassment again. <laughs> but you see, people say that I have like this mean sense of humor and mean sense of humor. But there is a reason for this, and it's because I come from Ukraine. You know, yeah, that country from the news that no one really cares about. <laughs> Except Russia, you know, they care a bit too much. <laughs> Before I even used to answer, you know, actually I'm from Ukraine, but let me check the news because... <laughs> sometimes, sometimes people ask, but where exactly in Ukraine? And I always ask, I'm from Kiev, the capital. But I like here to, to make the conversation easier. Actually, I'm from a small town next to Kiev in something like Potsdam. 
But I like here, I like here as well, you know, there, are, there are no cities like Potsdam in Ukraine, you know, Potsdam is really nice actually, and it has museums and gardens, and Potsdam is relatively famous, you know what's famous next to Kiev? Chernobyl. <laughs> Like as a kid, I used to have this idea, like you know, that, uh, like radiation ID, so you can get some like free meals at school and some like, benefits, like vitamins and free public transportation. And then once I went to a doctor, I'm like, yeah, hey doctor, you know, I have this problem, like my hair, it's fall off, falling off, like and it's all over our flat, and like you know, my mom started to worry, asking questions, and I didn't want to upset her, so I said that it's from a dog. <laughs> but, we don't, but we don't have a dog, so she might suspect. <laughs> so she, she might suspect something. Do you know what? It might be anything like that. Oh, man, I don't know. Like, zone 4 like, could be innocent. <laughs> but it doesn't seem so bad. You know, there are other kids from zone 2 and 3. That's just total disaster. Did you, did you try vitamins? No? Uh, did not help? Like, did, try to double the dose. Your big boy should help. And, and don't miss a free bus home, you know? The next one is tomorrow. <laughs> so yeah, I really could continue for the next hour talking about growing up in so to say challenging environment. But let's I mean we are all now we all live in Berlin. Let's talk about something positive. <laughs> <laughs> South Africa, she lives there. She came here last uh, this summer. We had this kind of summer, so summer film, clicked together, everything was good. But then she went back, and I wasn't really sure if I should commit myself to such a long, long, long distant relationships. But we, you know, we, we stayed in touch, of course, we could find each other. You know how it goes. And then during one of our phone calls, she was like, oh, like maybe you can come, uh, come visit me in South Africa. And I was like, I don't, I don't know if it's a good idea. You know, like tickets are expensive. I need a visa to go there, and what are we going to do there anyway? She was like, oh, we could play colonizer. And I was like, oh, what's colonizer? Oh, you know, like, I'm a black girl working at the police station, and you're a white man coming from Europe. You can enslave me and do naughty stuff. <laughs> and my reaction was like this. Exactly, I didn't get it. At first, I didn't get it, but then I was like, whoa. <laughs> this is like another level. <laughs> is it even legal? <laughs> And then she continued, yeah, usually I'm quite defensive of black people, but you seem to be a nice guy, so we could do it. But by then I already was booking tickets and doing it. <laughs> Somehow she knew how to hook me, you know. So next, next Saturday I'm actually flying to South Africa. But come on, what do you think of me? Would the fine girl to participate in such dirty games, you know, endorsing stereotypes? It's <laughs> There are some stereotypes, it's immoral at least. You see, living in Berlin made me much more aware about my white Ukrainian privilege and all this responsibility which comes with it. Of course I will let her to enslave me. This is not a great year. <laughs> I have no problems with that. I think, you see, I think, you know, we as a white people, we should give back more. And I can, can I'll start here with myself, you know, leading by example. <laughs> <laughs> if, <laughs> if it's gonna make her feel better about the colonial past, I would be just glad to make a difference in another historical dispute. Yeah. And by the way, you're welcome, Great Britain. Ukrainian people being a victim another time. Big deal. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but uh, don't worry about my behavior. You see, I understand that being a Berliner, it comes with the responsibility of uh, love, uh, respect, tolerance, and sometimes sacrifice. And I'm trying to manage that high bar, and I'm doing it by being surrounded by such an amazing people, and being, being in this crowd makes me a better person. So thank you for coming, and good evening. <laughs>